Emily, you can shine no matter what you're made of. <laughs> Dara, why would you be you when you could be new? That's so mean. <laughs> I like how this movie like how it presents marketing as uh-huh. like the mm-hmm. most evil of jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So today we are here on the swamp. Mm-hmm. The swamp is the name of our podcast, mm-hmm. and it is an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And today we're going to talk about a whack-ass movie Mm -hmm. starring the voice of our subject of this month, Mm -hmm. which is icon, legend, star, actor, performer. Mm -hmm. Podcast favorite. Ewan McGregor. Mm -hmm. And um, we picked this movie just to kind of diversify our profile for this month, and we thought it'd be fun to kind of throw in a a kid's Mm -hmm. movie that he was the voice in. So we're going to talk Mm -hmm. about the 2005 DreamWorks animated picture, robots personally some of the draw for me for you and mcgregor um is looking at him <laughs> and they didn't really make this robot look like him like no. you, you know how they kind of sometimes will make like greg kinnear greg yeah. kinnear p- plays uh-huh. the bad guy and they just like made a silver greg kinnear mm-hmm. they, they didn't really i don't think they, like amanda Bynes was definitely yeah like, yeah you're like, oh that's amanda Bynes. she's yellow because she's blonde uh-huh. yeah yeah um, She's got little pigtails. So yeah, they they didn't really lean in too hard with the the Ewan mm-hmm. McGregor uh, look, but yeah. I mean, how could you? He's so he's so boring they, looking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they could they uh, they could have just put his his little freckle, his little his cheek freckle. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, that would have done it for me. But he's yeah, he voices the main character in Robots, um, Rodney Copperbottom. Mm-hmm. Great name. And yeah, I, did you watch this movie a lot growing up? I wouldn't say a lot. I definitely saw it, but that like when we were choosing these movies, I was like, "Have I seen it?" So it's one of those ones that I probably like watched it once because uh-huh. it didn't, didn't really stick with me. I definitely had the DVD, and I had like a little portable DVD player that was mm-hmm. like it looked like a small toaster oven because yeah. it was like two thousand seven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um. I definitely brought that one with me, like, on vacations and stuff a lot. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my family mm-hmm. watched it a good amount. Like, maybe, like, until the DVD didn't really work anymore, like, type yeah. mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Which, yeah, this this DVD must be pretty old. I took it out. I work at a library. And I we were going to have to rent this movie because it's on, like, HBO Max or whatever, mm-hmm. which is fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. True. Um, and I do not have that. So it's not for free to stream anywhere. Um so I was like, well, let me just take it from work so I don't have mm-hmm. to pay for this. But the, yeah. the DVD was a little skippy, but honestly, I'm, I'm not mad because yeah. it l- probably is literally 15 years old. Yeah, see, seeing um, an actual, like, home screen yes. was great. I felt like I was yeah. yeah eight years old again. I really feel like the... The art of the home screen is much like a book end. Mm-hmm. Like, like a lot of kids' books have really fun on um, paper on the inside covers, just like as I get book ends are like the the things you put on your bookshelf. I don't know, like book end papers. I don't know yeah. if that's the right. You're really outing imagine. yourself as a librarian today. I am not a librarian. <laughs> you have to have your fucking master's degree to be a librarian. What? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Why? To have, because you have to know. You have to read every book. You have to read every book to be a librarian. No, I'm, I'm fucking yeah, with you. Say. I'm fucking with you. No. I was like, That'd be impossible. I, yeah, I was like... I was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm an assistant. Um, because I have not read every book. Mm-mm. Nor do I intend to. Mm. But I feel like the home screen of DVDs, like where you hit play and stuff, mm-hmm. I feel like those were like always kind of quirky and fun yeah. and like featured some sort of mm-hmm. music yeah. or like whatever. And this one, I mean, I don't think this one was anything special, but it definitely did bring me back. I haven't watched a, a DVD in, in quite a while. Ages, yeah. I think the only DVDs I regularly watch are the, the Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. DVD like set, a- which I have. But yeah, usually like streaming, I, I definitely think that the art of the movie home screen is something that we have lost yeah. to the digital age of film. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, especially too, because they give you a lot of behind the scenes and like bloopers like, and things yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like extra scenes. Like there was scene selection. Yeah. Do you remember not being mm-hmm. able to like rewind or fast yep. forward through a movie and you have to go to scene selection and there yep. would be like little mm-hmm. that yeah that shit was Which whack. Was so weird. Why could I mean? Why can't you just yeah? I don't know if you if you leave off halfway through a movie and then pick it up again a few days later. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I You're screwed. I don't know, hmm. um, but. This mo- it felt right to watch this on DVD. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on it was, brand. Yeah, it was the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie very much gives me that like early two thousand DreamWorks like 
um, Ice Age. Yeah. And like Shark Tale. Mm-hmm. Like it was Fucking early. Love Shark Tales. Like early 3D animation. So mm-hmm. it doesn't look great. But no. it looks better mm-hmm. than. It's something. Than you would maybe expect. Yeah. But they were still certainly getting the hang of it. Mm-hmm. I think this movie is a lot more visually impressive than. than Ice Age, or the you know uh, of that time. I think they picked a really easy subject, yeah, to to animate in that way. Like mm-hmm. the baby from Ice Age looks fucked. I, <laughs> the, I hate the baby from Ice like, Age. Like the humans in Ice Age look so fucked up. It gives me the same vibe as um, Renesmee in Twilight. Uh, yeah, right. And they did not have the excuse in Twilight because it was like fully yeah. It was like two thousand CGI was yeah. a thing. They. Yeah. We were, it was 2010s, at least. Yeah, so <laughs> this movie, I think, though, everything being, like, ro- robots, that's mm-hmm. the name of the movie, everything's a fucking robot, kind of lends itself to that maybe, like, oh, less sure. developed uh, 3D animation style. Yeah, I think it was just a fun... I, I can imagine it was really fun to animate it. Because mm. the, the creative... Everything's so colorful, too. You can get really creative with this, and obviously they did. I love the character design for a lot mm-hmm. of the robots. They really, like did some really cool, like, visual differences mm-hmm. for all the characters, because they're all robots, so I feel like you could kind of just plug and chug away if you yeah. just create kind of mm-hmm. a basic model and have them all look the same. Yeah. Like, kind of the way that Rodney and his dad kind of look, yeah. you know, very, like, human, anthropomorphized robot mm-hmm. figure, but I, I think that they did a good job diversifying the the visuals of, of the robots. Mm-hmm. Something that kind of fucked me up, though, was, like, the scale. Like, some of the robots <laughs> were, like, kind of little and, like, mm-hmm. big world is a house. Fucking huge. It's fucking huge. <laughs> like, there are scenes where Rodney's, like, sitting next to big world and, like, he's the size of his head. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you think Aunt Fanny is big and, like, then she's next to big world and you're like, oh, hey, he's big. <laughs> But I do like how they kind of incorporated a lot of, like, fun different mechanics into mm-hmm. the visual look of a lot of the robots. Like They all had their own little Yeah, tools like one one who's on wheels and the mm-hmm. other one yeah. kind of looked like a rock'em sock'em robot. I like yeah. Bill, Big Weld is just, like, a huge marble right. that kind of just rolls, like a magnetic... If I was a robot, I wouldn't want to roll like yeah, that. Yeah, yes. I, and I liked the... Um, the Halle Berry one who had um, the little roller skates that like know, popped out of her feet. Right? Oh. I was gonna say I was like if I was a robot I would also want that but then I'm like okay. I... You just be a whole you can just be a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Why be you when you could be new? Why be a human when you could literally be Big Weld? <laughs> so what, if you could be any of these robots like if you were to be a robot what kind of robot would you want to be? What sort of tools would you like to have incorporated into your infrastructure? That's a big question. <laughs> I kind of like the one who was mute, but you had to put the the little the floppy disk in his mouth to talk. I thought yeah, that, that would cool. be fun. Like um, selective mutism. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to like um, like compact myself. Yeah. Into something like oh. if I could just like, like a transformer, all, you could be yeah, a car. Yeah, like all my limbs just pull yeah. back in, and I'm like. Like this, like this, yeah. like the turtle of the robot world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I just want to be able to like easily hide. Mm, mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was like, if I can just put my head inside my body. You want a turtle? You want to yeah. be a turtle? Is what you're describing? <laughs> That's not a robot. That those exist. <laughs> Something that I thought was kind of fucked up about this movie was that he, I mean, I'm not going to call them humans, but they're basically like robot version of people, right? They have jobs and they have personalities. And they have brains and thoughts and they have the capability to love. Yeah. But then there are other robots who seem to only exist to serve a specific function. Yeah, like the lamp. Like, uh, yeah, the lamp, but just like has eyes or like the, the um, fire mm-hmm. extinguisher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like the, the lamp. The trash can. The lamp post, the trash cans. Some of them talked and then some of them didn't. Yeah. And like that little one that Rodney like invents, whatever, he like, love he doesn't him. talk. Yeah, He's no. basically a slave. He's like, I invented this uh-huh. other robot it has consciousness <laughs> can, can it can it you, does is it self aware yeah. you you didn't invent something you you made a person yeah you are you a made, being. you made a being and now you're going to put it to work which throughout the movie this robot does not accomplish any of the tasks of which it was designed to do pretty no, much. No, that's a lie. He kind of fucks up. He's designed to wash dishes. He doesn't wash a single dish. Yes, he does. What the fuck are you talking about? Then he about? proceeds to break all the dishes. <laughs> he washes them and then he proceeds to fuck everything up. I really relate to that robot though, just because whenever there's any sort of pressure, it just 
freaks out <laughs> and ruins the whole thing. So, like, but, like, is it a baby? It's been just built it today. It acts like a baby. It, <laughs> is this a baby robot that has been created to work as a slave and you're continuously putting it in new situations Pretty and it doesn't know? Up, Rod, yeah, and then you're judging him for not. Do- He's trying his best. But, like, the robots who are literally cemented into the ground because they're a fire hydrant, that is a sad life. They are yeah. focusing on the class and economic struggle. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about these robots who are literally enslaved. <laughs> because we are we are put under the impression, right, mm-hmm. that, that you are a baby robot. And then <laughs> as you grow, you get new parts to yeah. grow bigger. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. robots don't grow because they're not made of flesh. Yeah. They're, this me- is they're, true. they're made yes. of metal. Uh-huh. And <laughs> but they have a brain, right? So you keep your you keep your head. Do, they have do you a get brain a new head? Or a, well, I mean like they're programmed. Like a RAM, right? like you a know? processing unit. <laughs> yeah. Like a <laughs> like a like a memory chip. Oh yeah, yeah, for Something sure. Something like that. So why can't they they should be working on liberating the true working class, which are the robots who can't even walk or move. Take out the memory chip of the fucking fire hydrant and put him in a robot mm-hmm. who can. Mm-hmm. I just like why a fire hydrant too. It doesn't. I mean, I guess it serves a purpose, but it but doesn't need to be alive. A, yeah, exactly, exactly. Or like a lamp. It was, and there were a couple of times where I was like, okay, maybe they're just adding these to be the butt of a joke. But then you look around in the movie and like everything is a robot, yeah. and everything seems to have consciousness or mm-hmm. like eyeballs and facial features, yeah. and they can speak sometimes. Yeah. Why did they not just become people? Could you imagine, like, how guilty you would feel, like, being a person walking around? Right? And, like, like imagine if this mic had, like, a consciousness right oh now. Oh my god. I, tra- just- I treat this mic quite, quite well. I, this yeah. would, that would be, it's like being a house cat, I think. <laughs> that, the, the life that this mic would have if it was alive is, it would be that, like, of a, of a house cat. Yeah, but just slink around the room a little bit. But imagine, like, your friends with the mailbox outside, and you, like, visit him to, to <laughs> What? <laughs> I, would, I was going to ask if these if they eat, but we know that they don't eat because... But, oh, but there's a diner. But they show one vacuuming up, yeah. like, little pieces of metal. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing, too, is, like, the oil, like... They pour... Like, uh, they just <laughs> dump it on the outside of their body? Yeah. That's not how you oil a car. <laughs> Imagine you go to get your oil change and they just douse your car in hot oil. Somebody who made this movie... Did not think mm-hmm. that anybody <laughs> above the age of six would devote time to rational thinking. And boy, were they wrong. Because I have they some met questions. <laughs> and also, okay, I just need to bring up, like, this movie has a lot of, like, ad- like quote-unquote adult jokes in yeah. it. It was one of the first, well, not, like, one of the first, but it was in the time where a lot of animated movies were getting PG ratings yeah. rather than just G. Like, mm-hmm. usually it was a kid's movie, it's G, that's the end of yeah. it. But then they're like, well, let's add some jokes for the adults mm-hmm. that will surely go over the heads of the children, but yeah. keep it keep it entertaining, you know, for an older audience. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where the PG thing came in. Mm-hmm. This movie's kind of horny, and it's kind <laughs> of overtly sexual, at times. And it starts off, well, it, with the scene about Rodney being a baby. And they're like, let's yeah. make a baby. But yeah. they really just put him together like Ikea furniture. Yeah. And there's a fucking joke about a botched circumcision. <laughs> they like, <laughs> about a baby penis getting whacked on. I just, there's, it's too, it was too much for my liking. Mm-hmm. I, as an adult, I don't need that sort of humor mm. in order to be engaged and entertained by a movie mm. meant for children. You just have to, it just has to be a good movie. You know what I mean? See, yeah, I, I agree with you. It didn't do anything for me. Um, I think a, a good, what makes a good kids movie a good kids movie is if you can put like those adult jokes in like smoothly. They were so and clunky. Was, they were so clunky. Yeah. What, like I told you, I watched Shrek 2 the other mm. day and that well, well, it's a masterpiece. Well, I was going to say, we but... cannot be comparing this to the perfect film, which is Shrek 2. <laughs> I know, you're so right. Uh, but just... But, like, there were so many in that that made me, just like, fully just laugh out loud. Mm. And I was like... Whereas here, I'm, like, rolling my eyes. Yeah. Not, oh, my God. The only thing I can get behind is Aunt Fanny and her dump truck <laughs> ass. 
And they yes. didn't even need to address it. That <laughs> they didn't even need to be addressed. Just it would having have been funny, that. Yeah, no, it would have been funnier if just nothing was said. Yeah, yeah exactly. she's, she's got a fucking tanker on her. Exactly. I wonder what they did for like the the European version of this movie if there was like a foreign release because outside of America, Fanny means vagina. <laughs> yeah, right. Aunt Pussy. <laughs> I bet they called her like I bet they dubbed it to be like booty or something. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Yeah. That that was not a good international movie choice on no. their part. They could have called <laughs> no. her like Dump truck ass motherfucking. Yeah, this PG movie. <laughs> Aunt dump truck. I do like that her um her ass popped open like a car. Yes, and they all climbed inside. <laughs> Form and function. We love to see it. I also love that she was voiced by Jennifer Coolidge. So good. So yeah, she's that one was... of those that it was just so fitting. Yeah, perfect casting. Mm. Love, Th- I love this Jennifer movie's Coolidge. stacked. This movie's stacked with famous people. Yep. Left and right. Even um, to connect to our episode from last week, the actor who played Ziegler in Moulin Rouge played like the evil mom robot character <laughs> in Robots, which was like uh-huh. a weird Ewan McGregor connection in addition yeah. to... So are these robots slaves? And also, why do they live in a place called Robot City? Imagine imagine if New York City was called fucking Human Town. <laughs> Personville? <laughs> C- come on, writing it team at DreamWorks. Yeah. Like, kid, kids are stupid because they're kids, but they're not that fucking stupid. Call it, like, Gear Nation. Or, like, <laughs> Metal Tropolis. Something. <laughs> Give me something. Yeah. Robot City. Yeah. I just love, though, that, that like, Big Weld's face <laughs> is on every surface. <laughs> As if he like, single-handedly yeah. did he make the whole town? established this nation. That, so we don't what get any. We don't get any sort of um, indication if there is a government. Yeah, but we do get that Big Weld is regarded as a god figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the most that I can tell that this man has done is make um, transit in the city seamless. <laughs> <laughs> the world's biggest Rube Goldberg machine. And boy, oh boy, would I love to get fucking caged inside a ball and just slung around by different yeah. mechanisms. Fearing for my life the entire time. I think that was probably the most satisfying. That and like the I, domino mm-hmm. scene. I really liked that one, yeah. Yeah, those two scenes, I think, for kids are very entertaining because they're very fast paced yeah. and like exciting. But as an adult, I was like, this is so cool because yeah. somebody thought this through mm-hmm. like the the rube goldbergness yeah. of public transport mm-hmm. which I'm a whore for a rube goldberg machine <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the stage rube goldberg <laughs> um but i don't understand in in this cinematic universe if big weld created the rube goldberg public transit system the rbta if you will <laughs> Then why is he up in his majestic tower playing with dominoes like a... That is step one. You start with the dominoes mm-hmm. and then your mind expands. And that's when you move on to Rube Goldberg. It, I'm, <laughs> There's no way that's intellectually satisfying for him. Yes, he's a recluse. We get no, that. No, I, th- I think you're wrong. I think it brings him back to his basics. All right? <laughs> back to his roots. <laughs> exactly. He feels young again when he plays with his dominoes. So basically, though, his face is on every surface, mm-hmm. and we are led to believe of some sort that he's like an inventor mm-hmm. who makes people's lives better, whatever mm-hmm. that's supposed to mean, right? He has, a, makes- t- <laughs> he has a TV show. He's, he's a TV host. Yeah. He has his own program. Uh-huh. And he, he's out here just lecturing about how anybody can just get a job, which is just not the truth. <laughs> in any society, that's just not the truth. Yeah. He's just like, come in to this place of work. And now you work here. Mm-hmm. You are employed. <laughs> if you're not qualified, doesn't matter. You know who's not qualified? Even one little who? fucking bit? Rodney Copperbottom. <laughs> who, at the end of the movie, is selected to be the heir of Big Weld Industries. He made one robot. That sucked. It was cute, and it's, it's like a good time. You really hated that robot. I didn't hate it. It just didn't serve the function it was ever set out to do. It was a dishwashing robot, and it never did it. It was basically like a dog. It was a guinea pig. It was like a <laughs> guinea pig that they brought around that was kind of cute sometimes. Does that mean that I can be the CEO of Apple? Because I have a guinea pig? I guess. I fucking guess. Rodney, if anything, is a community organizer. Mm-hmm. That's true. He he did fix people, but that scene where he was fixing people, he kind of just seemed to be like, 
touching tools to their bodies <laughs> in various ways. He's like giving it his best guess. <laughs> it's like, I, I fucking hope this works. <laughs> And so he's like, yeah, he's fixing all these people in the street. If anything, he's a healthcare practitioner. That's very true. If anything, he's mm-hmm. he's a nurse. And all of a sudden he's like, no, I'm an inventor. What have you invented, sir? <laughs> His track record is garbage. And all of a sudden now he is he is the next business partner for fucking Big World Industries. You are not he just gonna- landed the sickest internship of his life. <laughs> Basically, what you're telling me is that you're turning it into a big hospital. You're going to fix people. Because the the point of the movie is that evil Greg Kinnear is a capitalist and wants to (laughs) sell things to people. Whereas Rodney says people are fine the way they are. You just need to give them the medical attention that they deserve. (laughs) Which is... I wish I could just buy new lungs. That would... You can't do that. Mm -mm. No. (laughs) I'm sure I couldn't afford it if it was a thing. But, I mean, this is... An allegory for the American healthcare system mm-hmm. and um, how the people need universal mm-hmm. healthcare, and Rodney is a catalyst mm-hmm. for the people. He should not be the CEO of. If this is the well, government, they- maybe he could be a local senator. Yeah, he could be a mayor. Mm-hmm. Rodney <laughs> cannot be an inv- an engineer. He's not an engineer. He just isn't. And you know what I think? I don't really think Big World's an engineer either, because you go into his office. You're questioning Big World, the man. <laughs> I'm just saying. The man, the myth, the legend. I'm just saying. The one with his face all over the fucking state. I think it's propaganda because Mm. you go into Big Weld's office and his chalkboard is just drawings of gears. (laughs) There are just drawings of springs and things. And I know it's for kids, so there there can't be, it can't be too complex. No math. (laughs) You know what you have to do in engineering? You got to do math, calculus. Mm Mm-hmm. He has to be able to program things. Like, he, there's no way that the tran- the Rube Goldberg transit um, <laughs> just <system> happened. <laughs> it didn't just appear. There's a lot of math to figure out how far and with what velocity you're throwing pe- these balls around the city with people and sorry, robots inside. <laughs> also, it is never explained. And again, I get it. Kids movie. You can't really deep dive into the yeah. motivations and the psyche. But of, we're gonna. Of each character. But they never say, really, why he left society. Why? No. Where you are regarded as a king and a god. And you supposedly are making everyone's life better. And then you just say, hey, Greg Kinnear, the business is yours. I'm gonna go hide and do dominoes for X number of years. Basically, right? The fame just got to him. It seems that way, but does he... I guess he... Big Weld doesn't have a fucking moral conscience then. Yeah, right. He's, he's there to help people. And then he just says, Bye. Sorry, I'm gonna fuck off. Right? And he doesn't even open his door. He doesn't even read the news. No. He, has, he has no clue what's happening mm-hmm. in the outside world. He just left it to just go to shit, basically. Mm-hmm. And I think that's on him. I think we need to prosecute Big Weld <laughs> for the crimes against humanity that have happened. Because we need to address how these robots are getting murdered in the streets... And it's just dust over like a yeah. joke. Mm-hmm. They have huge killing machines. There's a scene where all of the mm-hmm. robots, they're like, they're a bit bohemian, if you will. No. <laughs> they're like a quirky ragtag yeah. group of like low income robots who can't mm-hmm. afford the big fancy the shiny life. new parts, yeah. And um, they all at one point are like, oh, we have to hide. And they all fucking hide because one of these mis- street sweepers or whatever yeah. they call them are coming down. They're like, if they see that you have outdated parts, they kill you. <laughs> That's like saying if you don't have the newest iPhone, you get executed <laughs> in the street, which is pretty close to the truth. But this, there are... Like, how has no one done anything about that? I'm just saying that there are, there seem to be slaves. <laughs> There seems the class the class uprising is really great and I'm glad it happened but there are just a lot of fundamental issues here that we got to fix first <laughs> such as the murder like it's by Big World's company yeah too correct like that doesn't seem like something just one organization would do. That seems like a government thing. I think I think they are. I think it <laughs> think is industrialized government? government. Yeah, mm. I think it's like privatized, mm. which is which is fucked. This is we gotta we gotta get into this. This is a scary movie. That's it. It is, <laughs> and it's so scary when you think about how real mm. it is. <laughs> are we destined to just follow the path that yes. this film? 
Hi. Hey. Hello. Are you coming in for chocolate and vanilla? Chocolate and Come on in. You came in at a good time. We're getting really serious about all of the um. About the themes and robots. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the robots Murder that in the are streets. like the robots that are like um like toilets and trash cans, right? You watched yeah. the movie yeah, yeah. with us. Yeah. Are, are they slaves? Do they have consciousness? <laughs> they have imagine, consciousness. Imagine you're taking a shit and the toilet has eyes. <laughs> Wouldn't you feel bad about, about being a person? When the, the thing you're throwing your garbage into has, has, a, has a, a soul. <laughs> can And can they have families and a wife? Because we're supposed to believe that Rodney's parents are in the most dire of circumstances because they have, what, minimum wage jobs? Yeah. At least they have the option to start a family. <laughs> what about the fucking fire hydrant? Do you think they're just not programmed to have, like, feelings or something like that? Because if they... Because, okay, they don't have brains, but we, like we said, they probably have, like, a ram or some shit. I don't know, because at one point, though, the a dog, a robot dog, is about to piss on a robot <laughs> fire hydrant, and he's like, he said, hey, man, not. watch it. <laughs> so at least he has some feelings about his physical <laughs> entity. Yeah. You haven't even heard us talk about the murder in the streets. It's <laughs> murder in the streets happening in the robots cinematic universe. What is Big Weld doing about it? Hiding. <laughs> I think coward. Big, if anything, Big Weld is the true villain of this film. Mm -hmm. Is this like a Devil Wears Prada kind of thing? Like, yeah. like the actual villain is not who it's you capitalism. think capitalism. It <laughs> yeah. It's always capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jane. Okay. Uh, chocolate and vanilla. Oh, no. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yes. Oh, so this one has a theme. Okay. Ooh. And it's um, all movies that were based on books. Oh. Not that Robots is a movie that was based on <laughs> Yeah, The Communist Manifesto. <laughs> okay, you ready? Um, mm. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Um, the Help or Hidden Figures? And you just say which movie you like better, not which okay. book. Okay, The Help. Hidden Figures. I would say The Help. Uh, Maze Runner or Hunger Games? Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Uh, Fault in Our Stars or Love, Simon? <laughs> Love, Simon was a better movie. Like, the, like this last one was hard because I liked the Maze Runner books better than the Hunger Games mm -hmm. books, but the, the Maze Runner movies were shit, so. But, but so I'm answering about the movie, yes? yes. Sorry. Yes. I'll, I'll say Love, Simon. Um, what you, Love, Simon? Oh, Fault, uh, Fault, Fault in Our Stars. Uh, James and the Giant Peach or Matilda? Oh my god! Matilda. Yeah, I have to say Matilda. Because I have a That's... crush on Miss Honey. Yeah. I have I'm a crush on Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Matilda, too. Uh, Shawshank Redemption or Green Mile? Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank. Green Mile's so sad. Yeah, I read the book in middle school. Oh my god. Yeah, and then I haven't, I've never watched the movie because the book was so sad that I was like, there's no way this translates yeah. well to film. The movie is crazy long. You know who's uh -huh. in it? Sam Rockwell's in it. My fave. Oh. Yeah. Does he play someone really racist? Uh, he plays so. someone really crazy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, huh. Yeah. He's like, he like befriends a mouse or something. Oh, yes, Yeah, I yes. think he's that guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> misery or it? Miser. Uh, I've never seen the movie, but I read the book. But so I guess I'll say it because I've I haven't seen the Misery movie. It. So. Yeah, I'd say Misery. Um, Ella Enchanted or Princess Diaries? <gasps> Princess Diaries. Yeah, Princess Diaries. Yeah, Princess Diaries. Oh, Ella Enchanted's so good too, though. I didn't um, realize that was based on a book. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we have it at the library where I yes. work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pride and Prejudice or Little Women? Um, Pride and Prejudice. Little Women. Yeah, I'd say Pride and Prejudice. My phone auto corrected it to uh, Pride and Prednisone. <laughs> <laughs> the re the reboot. Uh, Harry Potter or Twilight? Twilight. Twilight. For movies, I was fiending to watch Twilight the other day. I thought about <laughs> it, and we watched it like less than a month ago. <laughs> like no, not even like the the first one. Like, like one the, of the other thing. One. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am number four. Or Ender's Game. I I haven't seen. Either. Don't know if I've seen. I I guess I am number four. I guess maybe because I think you've made me watch that because you were. I read all of those books. Yeah, there were like fifteen of them. So good. and you know why they only made one movie? Because <laughs> it didn't do that well. <laughs> I'll go with I am number four. I feel like I've seen like clips in Ender's Game. I haven't seen anything. Also, Glee shout out because. Um, oh my god. Yeah, uh, Diana Argon. Who's she playing Glee? Um. Quinn Quinn Bray. Quinn. Bray. <laughs> Shout out to her about what? What movie? Uh, there's just that there's a connection. She, she was in I Am Number Four. Oh, see, I don't even remember it. Um, Cat in the Hat or Grinch Stole Christmas? Cat in the Hat. Oh, the that's so hard. Wait, I love Jim Carrey. The though. Grinch. 
I would say The Grinch. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. The, but those, oh, those movies are so good. Those mm. movies make you feel like you're on crack. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a tattoo of Max the dog from The Grinch. Yes! Yeah. That's yeah. so good. Mm-hmm. That's all I have. Thank you. That was a good one. <laughs> With a theme. You like the themes? We, yeah. yeah. Oh we, are a, we are a themed podcast. Yeah, every we month is that, themed. Right? <laughs> well, All of our drinks and snacks are themed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. We love it when Jen pops by. Mm-hmm. Always a good time. It always I, it always takes me by surprise, despite the fact that we live in the same house. <laughs> she always like kind of peeks her head in a little bit to see if it's a good time. <laughs> it's lovely. It's very refreshing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So are these robots immortal? That's another great question. Because we see the is it Fender, the um the Robin Williams yeah. character. Yeah. We see him get flinged through the Rube Goldberg machine with no protection. We see the mm-hmm. giant hammer come and knock him out into the yeah. skyline. I mean, they can be killed. It's just do they would they ever die on their own? Wait, well, if... they have to be like melted or disassembled. Yeah. But like impact? Do they? Can you catch a virus? Definitely. You, I don't. Maybe if you're programmed. You know what I mean. How does it work? Mm. They have to have some sort of computer unit in them because if they're literally just machines, then how do they? How do they have personalities? Who's to say? Let's remake this movie, but about AIs. Ugh, scary. Like Sophia the robot. You yeah. know her. She's fucking mm-hmm. scary. She's horrific. She's scalped. She's. <laughs> She's going to listen to this and go... She, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. She's going to find us now. I would love to have an interaction with Sophia the Robot via Twitter. Because <laughs> at least I have a scalp, you know, at the end of the day. Bro, you'd put that bitch on blast. <laughs> Airs are scary, though. Sophia would get flamed. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, though, that the, speaking of AIs... Mm. This this movie is very much like if you fed an AI every kids movie made between yeah. the years two thousand mm-hmm. and two thousand eight that like it would just you know this is so a plot b plot yeah formulaic yeah. you know likable protagonist mm-hmm. love interest I I do like the little spin that it's about like you know class struggle. <laughs> And uh-huh. really, ma- really makes the adults think. And like over <laughs> overpowering your government through like community, that's yeah. kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, which I guess you don't see that in a ton of kids' movies, but I think you see it in probably more than you would expect. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that has anything to do with the political views of people our age. It's like the kind of movies we watch when we mm-hmm. really because like I know I talked about this on our holes episode because mm-hmm. it's literally just talking about like the prison industrial complex yeah. and I'm looking at this movie and it's basically saying that like all people deserve to live no matter what your class status is which is like a question for some reason a fucking question that needs to be asked mm-hmm. and like how cor- corporations controlling the lives of people I don't know it's pretty interesting and I feel like kids grasp onto that stuff probably more than you would give them credit for. Yeah. Subconsciously, for sure. So this movie came out the same time frame as the third Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this movie, a lot of people bought tickets to go see it because the trailer Mm -hmm. to the third Star Wars movie had ad space before robots. So like Mm. crazy Star Wars fans would buy tickets to robots just to see the Revenge of the Sith trailer, and then they would just leave. Because, like, because, you know, like, YouTube yeah. wasn't really a thing. Yeah, no. Like, there wasn't really uh-huh. a way to, like, go see the trailer unless you, like, yeah. went out to the movie theaters. That's insane. So these crazy Star Wars fans, like, went and bought tickets to robots, but, like, just to sit through the trailers. Like, why would you not at least stay for the movie? I mean, honestly... They didn't honestly, give a shit. They didn't give a shit about dreams. If I bought a $12 ticket Well, it's 2005, so it was probably, like, six bucks. You Inflation. Think? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like movies, like, ticket prices have always been very expensive, but I could be wrong, considering that I was six in 2005. <laughs> yeah, right, you weren't, you weren't buying movie tickets. Yeah, no. <laughs> Did you like how much? Let's see. Well, yeah, I'm just I'm curious about inflation. <laughs> okay, so it was, it was, in 2010, the average movie ticket cost seven eighty nine. dollars That was in 2010. Damn! Yeah. But this is saying that the average movie ticket price in 2020 is... Less than ten dollars, which is a lot. Which is just factually untrue. It's like between twelve and fifteen dollars, I think. Yeah, yeah, depending on what time of the day. Yeah, you go. yeah. 
It oh. never really occurred to me until like fairly, you know, recently in my life that movie theaters mm -hmm. only profit from the food that they sell. Yeah. Like, because 100% of ticket sales mm -hmm. go back into Hollywood. Yeah, and that's why it's so fucking expensive to get popcorn. Yeah, po yeah. And popcorn is the cheapest fucking snack to make. Do you know what a kernel of corn costs in the grand <laughs> scheme of things? It's like Some sand. It's like pennies. To make the, those huge buckets of popcorn yeah. that they have, they they throw it all out at the end of the night. They throw out what I could never work at a movie theater because I, I would literally just eat popcorn do every you day of my life. Put butter on your popcorn. Yes, me too. Jen and I have struggled because as like movie buddies mm -hmm. who go to the theater a lot together, she does not like butter on her popcorn, and I want it doused. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want I want acne around my mouth by the end of the movie because <laughs> that's how much butter I'm rubbing into my fucking skin. You ever go to those movie theaters that have the like the put your own butter on? Oh it? Oh my it's god, like a pump. And I just cannot stop myself. I want the <laughs> bottom of my bag to be leaking a little bit. Do you have like a, a candy, like a movie theater candy that's your go-to? Um, hmm. Not particularly. I did like Milk Duds for a really long time, but my teeth can't take it anymore. Mm. Um, I do like a good like Skittle. I'm not the most, the biggest chocolate person. Mm. I know there's people that like to put like chocolate like in with their popcorn. Yeah, I like a handful of buttery popcorn with like a couple of M&Ms in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, no. So I'd say, yeah, probably Skittles, but I never buy them at the movie theater because I can mm. I can get better candy like somewhere yeah. else. It, it is weird cheaper. to me the the like I'm not gonna say culture, but like the the movie candy mm -hmm. specifically, like Bunch of Crunch. I think of. that's really good. I like Bunch of Crunch, and that will be like if I'm at mm -hmm. the movie kiosk, I'll get like if I want both popcorn and yeah. a candy, mm -hmm. I'll get the Bunch of Crunch because yeah. I. I don't know. I find this synergy mm -hmm. between them. But those little cardboard boxes of candy mm -hmm. are, first of all, if you just go to fucking Walmart or Target, they have huge bins of them for, yeah. like, less than a dollar yeah. each. Not the movie theater. They're, like, uh -huh. six bucks. But So you just go somewhere else and get your candy mm -hmm. first. But for some reason, I would never eat that candy outside of the context of a movie theater. I feel the same way about Twizzlers. Like, <laughs> a, like yeah, right. I don't even like Twizzlers. But yeah, for no. some reason, when I'm at the movie, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll get Twizzlers. Yeah, like, what the why fuck? not? Mm -hmm. But if I were, yeah. like, in like, the candy section of the grocery store, I would buy something yeah, completely yeah. different than what I would pick at the movie What's, theater. So is Bunch of Crunch your go-to? Yeah, I would say, like, for movie theater mm -hmm. candy, I definitely am of the um, go to a grocery store and buy your a own, decent yeah. snack first. Like, I am not above mm. smuggling into the movie theater a, a bag of Tostitos Hint of Lime. Nice. Uh, That's just, like, loud as fuck, though. It, yeah, it is loud. But, like, a, a good, like, Cheez-Its. I don't know. Mm. Just, like, a, a snack that is cheaper yeah. than what I will pay at yeah. the movies and also better you ever bring in like full like, wendy's meals? Yeah. on henry yeah. and i's first date um or like one of our first huh. dates we bought wendy's four for fours and then we went inside huh. deadpool and we like smuggled them in and that's a first. great date mm -hmm. yeah it was good it was good nice, stuff nice mm -hmm. do you have a okay because usually they have those flavors um of slushies do you get the slushies sometime i was i mean as like a kid yeah. i did um, but I'm, like, not a huge soda person either, mm. so I don't really get soda at the theater yeah. either. I've been a, a couple times post-21st birthday, I've gotten alcohol at the theater, which is That's crazy. so insanely uh -huh. expensive. A, a glass of wine, that. a glass of rosé yeah. at a Cinemagic. Not, I, they don't have it at Cinemagic, yeah. but, like, a whatever. Yeah, well, one that sells booze. Like, $11. And you know what one glass of wine is going to do to me? Nothing. Mm -hmm. That's why you bring your own nips yeah. on your tits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the movie theater. I, I kind of would like to be like, if I'm going to be drunk and watching a movie, I want to be in my house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would. I, but since uh, 21st birthday, mm -hmm. I haven't had too many chances to do uh, fun alcohol in public things because yeah. of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I celebrated my birthday the, like during lockdown lockdown. Mm -hmm. So that was a time. Yeah. <laughs> So sad. <laughs> but I am I am post-COVID ready to just get absolutely trashed in every public scenario. <laughs> it, it is tough, though. Like, as a if you're a person who doesn't have a ton of money and you're out and you're like, oh, wow, an entire handle of vodka is the same price as this one mixed drink. It's insane. Like, like I just can't. It's like w bottled water. Mm -hmm. Water is free. Well. Not free. It's but not you know free. What I mean. Nothing is free. Yeah, no. But. You can even get a case of bottled water mm -hmm. at the grocery store, like a 24-pack, yeah. for like three bucks. Mm -hmm. And then you're out somewhere, and they sell individual bottles of water for like six bucks. I mean, yeah. six is on the upper, and that's like Disney. But like, even even a dollar, even a dollar for a bottle of water, yeah. 
that's crazy. Mm-hmm. But that's how alcohol, I've always thought that way because I worked at a grocery store and mm-hmm. we have in our town, the town next to where we grew up has like this big flea market every year and there are like food trucks and stuff. And so all the people who ran all the like food establishments and like the food trucks and stuff would come to the grocery mm-hmm. stores to get things like for cheap, like hot dog buns yeah. and like yeah. whatever. And I always thought like, yeah, that's nuts because they would just buy 24 packs of water mm-hmm. and then sell them to thirsty Mm -hmm. antiquers for like three bucks a pop and that's crazy and then you think about alcohol and you're like bro oh yeah it's nuts have you ever been somewhere and you're like this drink is not that strong yeah oh yeah i'm like i paid i paid 12 dollars for this mixed drink and it is mostly juice i went to um one of my roommates had a birthday recently and we went to um what is it a brewery Applebee's. <laughs> My favorite local brewery. Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a really good one. If anyone in uh, was the greater Hartford area needs a good brewery, go to City Steam. It's Ooh. free advertising. Nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'll, uh, it's so crazy too. Because shots, because like, it was like, I was like, it's the it was their 21st birthday and I was like, oh, I'll buy them. I'll buy like a round of shots. Yeah. A shot is $7. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've never, I, I, I've never like been to a club or anything like that. That's that's crazy. I would never pay that much. That's when you put nips uh-huh. in your body and then you <laughs> sneak them into the club. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> or the bar or the restaurant. But that's so. I feel like in like a club or a concert, like that's different. To do mm-hmm. it at a restaurant, I would feel kind of that would not make me feel classy. But I'd probably still there was, do it. There was an incident um, when. <laughs> Uh, I was at a restaurant and we were looking at, um, what is it? Yeah, the drink menu. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're going to end up paying $7 for shots. So just do a shot. And my, no, there was a liquor store across the, across the way. And one of my roommates, she ran out the door, ran there and came back. And she, she just like ordered a Coke and then put a little bit of whatever yeah, well, in Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah no. that's the way to do it. I mm-hmm. think, is that illegal? She's an icon. Could that, could they kick you out for that? If they, if a restaurant noticed well, you. See me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> wow, we really veered off robots here. <laughs> um, yeah, I was trying to find a way to loop back around. I did, I did kind of visually enjoy, though, that they're con- like the concept of that coffee is oil. And that yeah. they, every like morning or when they were like tired mm-hmm. after a long day, they would like oil themselves, which is where they would like take a little coffee cup full of oil and then just <laughs> dump it on their chest. I just would love like you're at a diner yeah. and you fucking, you just take your hot coffee and you just dump it on your tits and you're like, ah, <laughs> yes. They've got to have grates in place, like on the ground, like in a shower yeah, right. or something like that. So you know for everything I mean? to seep through. Yeah. Who is cleaning this shit up? <laughs> Probably some an, robot. An, yeah. An inanimate robot. Oh like. my God. But they they have a diner, and there are dirty dishes. And so if they're just eating scraps of metal, that would not cause a mess. Because if anything, it would just be recycled. Mm-hmm. So what? Where is the? Where are the dirty dishes mm-hmm. coming from? The creators obviously didn't think this through oh my whatsoever. God. <laughs> so did you feel any type of way about Ewan McGregor's performance? No, me either. No, I didn't have one thought about it. Me- <laughs> Yeah, me either. I, I a couple of times was like, "Oh, he's doing an American accent right now." Which I did is, think about that. Yeah, actually. which is like not what he actually sounds like. Yeah. But that's also just like he's like Scottish or something. Isn't yeah, he? Mm-hmm. nice. It's like being his name is Ewan. Yeah, <laughs> Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he was doing an American accent convincingly enough that mm-hmm. I just didn't give it any thought. Um, very boring. They could have. Just cast literally any person yeah. to do this, but they need the they need that Hollywood uh-huh. promo dollar yeah. sign. Yeah, you know whose performance I did like Robin Williams. Well, yeah, of course he brings the energy, the drama, the hype to everything he's yeah. in, especially with voice acting. He's I just love him. he's just like I don't want to say like insane. <laughs> but he just brings like crazy energy, yeah. you know, and and like mm-hmm. people don't mm-hmm. act like that. He is like surreal he's yeah. a surreal mm-hmm. acting person mm-hmm. not anymore because he's dead but <laughs> but i just mean like <laughs> like um the manic i think is the word i'm looking uh-huh. for the manic energy he brings yeah. especially to voice you acting just flip roles. it on i assume changing accents robin williams general speaking voice is he from america because that does not sound like an american accent he it's like a little bit of a little bit of British, a little bit. He always sounds like he's, like, reading poetry really fast. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, so Robin Williams really, like, switched, switched, switch, switcheth, 
switched up his accent um, in this movie, and mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty fun. I think that a lot of the voice performances basically would just me uh, having a really fun time reading the IMDb page, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. just like stacked mm -hmm. full of famous mm -hmm. people. And so you'd hear, you hear their voice and you're like, who's that? And then you Google it and then you spend the whole movie being like, who's that? And then you Google yeah. it and then that was most of the enjoyment I got out of this movie. You know who I was really thrown by was Natasha Lyonne. Yeah. Because she's got a very unique voice. And like, it did I did not I, come through. Yeah, here. no, no, whatsoever. Like, I know what Natasha Leone sounds like. Yeah, I, yeah, I would have, I would not have had to IMDB that shit. I could have uh -huh. clocked it. But yeah, she just, she just sounded very normal. Normal. <laughs> not like a six pack a day smoker from New York. Like, not <laughs> Natasha Leone. I would not have clocked mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I saw her on the cast list. And I was like, I wonder when she's going to pop up. And then I was like, huh. Yeah. Had no idea. Um, but yeah, this movie is stacked full of fucking famous people. So Ewan McGregor is the, is the main character. Mm -hmm. Obviously Robin Williams plays mm -hmm. like the secondary. Big Weld is Mel Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I feel some type of way. <laughs> um, Amanda Bynes plays Piper, which I guess yeah. was kind of like a sought after role for like young women in Hollywood yeah, at the weird. time, which she was a very minor character. Mm -hmm. You, th She's established very early to be the romantic interest for Rodney. Mm. She kind of flirts with him a little bit and she's like the girl of the group. She's <laughs> like, you know, the spunky yeah. girl. But then all of a sudden he goes for like Miss Corporate Halle Berry. Yeah, right. Which, I, what, what is the age situation here? I have no idea. Because he is fresh out of he high school. He graduated high not? school. And she's got a corporate job. Yeah. She's like 30 at least. And he's right. 18. Right. Like, and she also, yeah, I mean, she just looks old because she's shinier. Mm -hmm. Maybe that just has something to say about money. I don't yeah. know. But Jennifer Maybe. Coolidge is Aunt Fanny, which is amazing. Ugh, love her. Paul Giamatti as fucking Tim the Gate Guard. I, love I that. loved that. That was probably one of my favorite characters. Um, Paula Abdul. Why? Was fucking in this movie. Stanley Tucci plays his dad. Love the There's like, you just look through and you're like, he's, holy shit. He's another shit. one that I thought I would have clocked. And then you told me it was right? him. Right? I, yeah. I had no idea. Just pretty, mm -hmm. I think everyone's For an average movie, too, which is like. Well, clearly, I mean, clearly they dumped a ton of money into the uh -huh. the casting budget. Because these yeah. are all huge fucking stars. Mm -hmm. I but wanna know what the budget generally was for. It, it. was, I believe, I I looked it up, um, and it obviously made back way more money than it cost, which is mm -hmm. usually the case for seventy five million dollars. And it brought in two hundred sixty mm. million. So Okay. That's crazy. That is a smaller budget than Moulin Rouge, which we covered last week. Moulin Rouge had yeah. a budget of like $50 million. Yeah, and they had the most expensive diamond necklace ever in yeah. any movie. <laughs> what did this movie have? Mel Brooks? <laughs> As I'm not, I just, I think I've said too much about Big Weld. The Big Weld stan <laughs> yeah. community is going to come after me. Here's the thing is I get it. I get that at the end of the day, he wasn't a bad guy, but the decisions he made impacted people. People died. Robots. Robots died because of Big Weld's <laughs> obsession with dominoes. And for that, we can never forgive it's him. It's like people who say, I don't read the news mm -hmm. because I don't like it like yeah. they're like oh, the news is just so sad these yeah. days i just don't i just don't even pay attention to it because it just makes me upset and i'm like oh so you can afford to not pay attention yeah, to right? the realities mm -hmm. of what's happening around you big world you can just <laughs> afford to be a recluse and fucking how what is no one's mad about it either Rodney's, like Rodney's the only person that ever gets mad about it. Well, he's, yeah, he's mad at, like, why is this man... And it was for selfish reasons, too, because he wanted to be an inventor. It's not because yeah. he actually gave a shit. Yeah, it's because he was a fan. This, mm -hmm. this would be as if Jesus Christ <laughs> went missing and nobody looked for him. They're like, hey, you know that guy whose portrait's in our room and our, his little figurine of his crucified bodies in our house? Well, I guess that wouldn't make sense because at that point Jesus would be dead. But that'd be like if Jesus came back and then disappeared <laughs> yeah. again and then everyone was like, ah! But it's not like he died. He's just gone missing. Yeah. And then everyone's like, well, we just won't look for him because mm -hmm. he's probably just doing his own thing. Because I don't know enough about religion to speak about this. Mm, <laughs> I just don't understand. So, so Greg Kinnear... What's his name? Ratchet? I hate that. <laughs> Greg Kinnear's character mm -hmm. uses the image of Big Weld as a propaganda front yeah. 
to promote his personal uh, business interests. Yeah. But they seem to be still putting out Big Weld esque commercials and stuff. So is the is the community supposed to believe that Big Weld is still uh, an integral part of the company, but he is just you know choosing to be yeah. less public? Yeah, I think so. Because then people are like, oh, well, we haven't seen him in years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he could be dead. <laughs> Got crushed by one of those giant dominoes. Nothing could crush Big Weld. <laughs> look one... at it, look at his mask. <laughs> the one thing I will say is he had like the sickest entrance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He, he knows how to sur- he knows how to enter a room, <laughs> Big Weld. As someone that is fucking huge, I have no idea <laughs> <laughs> how he was able to <laughs> surf down those dominoes, man. <laughs> also, what is the scale of his apartment? Of his penthouse apartment, that he has enough room for dominoes to ripple with force. <laughs> enough for how, how much money did he sink into buying these dominoes? Does, I mean, I think wealth. I think money is no object to big wealth. <laughs> You're right. It's like Elon Musk. Yeah. If he like had a domino hobby. <laughs> It would be. It would obviously be the most ornate domino hobby of yeah. all time because yeah. he could just. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just the the way. Imagine. I mean, I would say imagine if we glorified business owners the way that they do big weld here, but we we do. Yeah, I was gonna say Elon Musk is literally hosting Saturday Night Live Ugh, like this or yeah, next oh week God. or something. I saw a funny people like just take the same colored post it notes that SNL uses to announce the lineup and they'll yeah. just like make fake ones. And I they're like so that. funny. Ugh. They're so funny. But yeah, it's why the celebrity of Big Weld though transcends <laughs> any any actual thing. Imagine yeah. Imagine if on every Tesla was, like, an imprint of Elon Musk's face. That'd be terrifying. So what would you pair with this movie? <laughs> Did you think I was going to ask what robot you'd find? <laughs> I was going to bring it up. Uh-huh. We can talk about it later, because it, it, is, it is a part of a segment. Uh-huh. Um, but so, for a cocktail pairing... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. This movie's not very long. I'm gonna say a juice pouch. <laughs> Do you know that um that TikTok where it's that guy's like big Capri Sun, big Capri Sun. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he takes like a huge gallon sized Ziploc bag uh-huh. and he cuts open Capri Suns and dumps them in to this, oh, yeah. to this gallon sized bag yeah, and then he stabs a straw through it. I think, I think you I should have seen that one. And like I, I think it's really fun a lot of restaurants that are doing like takeout yeah. um have included oh, yeah. alcohol that, yeah. and so it's like little juice pouches basically yeah. of, of cocktails mm-hmm. and i think you support a local business who mm-hmm. who's doing takeout and um get like some juice pouch <laughs> yeah. cocktails i think they mm-hmm. definitely yeah that would be really fun or just a capri sun and add vodka mm-hmm. i don't know or mm-hmm. like a you know those kool-aid slammers the li- yeah. ones that are in the plastic the plastic yeah. bottles with the little twist mm-hmm. top mm-hmm. with the nipple top. <laughs> oh my god, I bet. I didn't realize that the whole purpose of that was so that you could close it again. What? You, who can't finish that? <laughs> they were delicious. They were like crack. It was just sugar. I guzzled those, bitch. Did you prefer those or the little barrel juices? Those. Yeah, me too. The barrels were alright, but... Less, way less sugar. They were pretty yeah. watery. yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I fucked and with the Capri Sun for sure. What was your favorite Capri Sun flavor? Roaring Waters. Is that a flavor? Or is that the whole thing? I think it was a. I think it was a line. I think it was a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They did like a. Right. If as a kid, I really liked the lemonade ones, but I like fruit punch ones. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me let me look at the They've Capri like... Sun flavors. I know that I never fucked with anything kiwi. Yeah, the strawberry kiwi one. Gross. Don't like it. So no. anything okay. That's bottom of my barrel. Trix yogurt. Trix yogurt is an abomination. If you speak like things that would kill a Victorian <laughs> child, a single spoonful of Trix yogurt would obliterate a Victorian child. You wanna child. hear something fucked up? There's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> On this yogurt tangent. They have Gushers yogurt now. Yoplait has a it. line of Gushers yogurt. I believe it, yeah. It's Foul. <laughs> Food shouldn't look like that. <laughs> um, like there's, it's like little. Um, they're they're almost like bobas, but they're like they're just like tiny little gushers they put in it, and it's so weird. Yeah, they also have would... Starburst ones, and they have a. The Starburst one was you. You tried these. Yes, you... <laughs> I had 
Nazis. <laughs> yes. I okay. no. I'm speaking from experience. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought you just like observed at the grocery no, store. I think no, no, the, they they were purchased. The yogurt section of the grocery store could be a very interesting subject for for analysis. I mean it. I truly do. The it's variety of variety. yogurt on the market, yeah, far too many. Yeah, no, I liked the Trix yogurt as a kid, though. Honestly, I won't lie to you. I liked. I kind of liked the Danimals ones that you could drink. Yeah. Kind of like smoothies. They're very small, though. Yeah, they were. Super small. I really, I liked the ones always um, that came with a little thing of, like, candy at, on the top. So yeah. So it would be, like, a little m and so you, like, dump it yeah, in the next into your good. yogurt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now they just have, like, Chobani flips, which are still Which good. are for adults. Yeah, yeah. adultified. <laughs> I know the Chobani also has drinkable yogurts, and I'm like, you can't trick me. This is Danimals. <laughs> Where are the Sprouse twins? <laughs> Trying to give me a free cruise. I remember at one point, Chobani followed me on Twitter. <gasps> yes! I just wa- oh. Yes! <laughs> right? I remember that because you tweeted Chobani, Yanni, and Bonnie. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I personally have a goal in okay. life. Okay, yeah. and, and enlighten think, me. I don't think it will ever happen, mm-hmm. but I, I tweet at them quite regularly. I've heard BuzzFeed is not a great place to work. No. So, and Yeah, but so any BuzzFeed adjacent type of um company that makes like silly youtube videos yeah. you know i don't know if you want to hit my line i really want to do food pairings with alcohol so you're you're at a party right mm-hmm. pickens are slim there's vodka but there's also doritos mm-hmm. it works and sometimes you just got to know which ones to go for mm-hmm. and so i think doing shots of different types of liquor with different types of snack foods would be a brilliant Article. You, you, YouTube segment. So, and I'm willing to donate myself mm. as a catalyst mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Um, that subject. Who did you see? You said you tweeted at them. Who's them? BuzzFeed? Buzz, BuzzFeed, oh, yeah. Okay. This was back in the day when I first yeah. had the idea. No mm-hmm. response. I also used to tweet at Cosmo a lot. Mm-hmm. To, yeah, I, I'm, I'm beyond it now. I'm, I'm done begging, you know? You could, you could do some really good work for with, like, The Onion or Reductress. But I'm serious. I'm serious about this. This isn't... I'm for real. I am for real. <laughs> so what would you pair with this... Um, um, yeah, I think juice pouch is juice brilliant. Pouch. I think any sort of... If you went to the store and just bought some sort of drink from your childhood, mm-hmm. like um, like Sunny D. Yeah, ooh. Or like something, and then you like made a mixed drink high with C. it. High C. High C, yeah. Oh, high C would be really or like, good. Or um, like fruit punch, like the Hawaiian punch. Uh-huh. Um, something mm-hmm. like that I think would be really fun. Because mm-hmm. we also, we ate tater tots. And I think, again, dinosaur chicken nuggets. I was going to say nuggets. Right? Or like a kid's cuisine. Mm-hmm. Do they even still make those? I doubt it. Yes, they do. <laughs> Did you have one with your fucking... <laughs> Gogurt. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> those things were banging as a kid. I loved those. Oh, yeah. I loved the pudding that it came with. Mm-hmm. That had mm-hmm. the little sprinkles. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. The Kids. corn was shit. I'll say that. Yeah. I hated the corn. <laughs> I liked when it was cornbread. <laughs> yeah. oh, I forgot they did oh. that. Kids' that cuisines. Really what a ride. If you had working parents, <laughs> you yep. if, if you had, like, middle class working parents, you were familiar with the kids' <laughs> cuisine. <laughs> you knew exactly what one. You, you get brought, like, to the grocery store. Yes, and you got to pick out which ones you liked. <laughs> oh, yes. But, yeah, dino nuggets are definitely... Yeah, I would say, like, go to the grocery store and pretend that you are either, like, on meth or (laughs) you're eight. Right? (laughs) Or just say you have a child. (laughs) No, like, like, get into that mind space. Oh! Like, like, I am fucked up and I need food now. But also, like, an eight-year-old, like... Mm-hmm. If you brought an eight-year-old to the grocery store and said to pick three things, uh-huh. like, what they would get, and yeah. that's what you should eat for this movie. Yeah, that's, like, I like that. Cheese balls, uh-huh. fucking kids' cuisine, uh-huh. and, like, a whole gallon of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I think would be, like, a fun... Yeah, I think that's good. A fun way mm-hmm. to do it. And mm-hmm. um, what movie would you pair this up with next? Meet the Robinsons. That's really good. I was gonna say The Iron Giant. So we both went that's for, good. like, additional, <laughs> like, robot mm-hmm. Films, I, but I think any of those, like I said, early kind of two thousand streamworks movies, yeah. like Shark Tale, or any I of do those, love would be Shark good. Tales. But you definitely would have to be in a specific mood. Sh- Shrek, I any time is a good time for Shrek, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would go with as far as like politically political undertones in a movie about robots. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Iron Giant is the yeah. superior. So you yeah. follow this up with Iron Giant yeah. for sure. I think it's a good one. Um, and then fuck Mary Kill. It's like <laughs> here's the thing. No, we can do it. Robots do not fuck in this movie. 
It is, it is implied, well, no, but it is implied that they do fuck. They, it is implied that they fuck, but there is no procreation happening, mm-hmm. right? Because they, they buy the baby from Ikea and they put it together. <laughs> yeah. But then there's a part where Big Weld, mm-hmm. in his, like, private truck, mm-hmm. has, like, a thing where a bed comes out and, yeah. like, sexy music uh-huh. starts playing. Mm-hmm. What else could that mm-hmm. be for? Mm-hmm. And, like, Aunt Fanny's <laughs> huge ass. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it is implied, I think, that the mm-hmm. robots do fuck. Because <laughs> they, have, they have genitalia. That is also That's explicitly true. said. True. Mm-hmm. So are we just imagining that we are also robots in, sure. in this universe? Yes. I mean, like, I can't say that I'm sexually attracted to any of these robots, so I'm gonna have to fuck for, for power and status, you know? I'm gonna have to fuck Big Weld. <laughs> he does not have a penis! He does not wear pants! <laughs> do some, do some robots, are some robots afforded the luxury of genitalia where others <laughs> do not? Because Big Weld is smooth. He is a globe. <laughs> Yet Rodney, Rodney does wear pants. Mm-hmm. Robot pants. Yeah. And he, we explicitly know that he does have a dick. <laughs> yeah, they let us know yeah. that Rodney, Rodney's got a dick. If, so if Rodney's the only robot with a dick in the entire <laughs> robot cinematic universe, then, there, then we only have one choice. Let's go ahead and assume that he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to fuck the Natasha Leone robot because she seems super horny and mm-hmm. of, of high status, mm-hmm. so... So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I'll get something out of it after. I'll get invited to a gala, to a ball. Yeah. That that could work out for me, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm going to marry... Uh, I'll marry fucking... The robot who has wheels for mm. his feet. Mm-hmm. Um... Just a neutral choice. Yeah, okay. And because I feel pretty strongly about most of the characters in this movie. Mm. And at least that's somebody <laughs> I feel neutral enough about. Okay. And I guess I'm I'm going to kill... You, you're expecting me to say Big Weld, but I'm not. I'm going to kill probably... I mean, is it implied that Greg Kinnear's character dies at the end of this no, movie? No, he's just hanging up on that. Yeah. You know, they just leave him. Can we really kill a robot? Oh, movie follow-up. I, Robot. Watch I robot one. after this. That'd be one. that'd be mm-hmm. fun. I guess I'll kill fucking. Wait, I want to change my answer. I'm gonna marry Aunt Fanny because um, she has such a lovely house and yeah. she seems like a, a gracious host. And I uh-huh. can crawl inside her ass and sleep there. And I bet that'd be real cozy. <laughs> if I, if we were in public and I was getting kind of nervous, <laughs> yeah. I could just like, hey, honey, pop open the trunk. <laughs> Um, and yeah, fuck it. I guess I'll kill Big Weld. <laughs> no, I'm gonna kill Tim the Tim the doorkeeper. I'm gonna kill. Why? Because he sucks. <laughs> I was gonna say that I'd marry him. You're gonna marry Paul <laughs> Giamatti. <laughs> I really liked his character. I don't know what that says about me. But <laughs> I just thought he was really funny. <laughs> He's a dick. You're not a dick on the job. Well, you like your I job. I like my job. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. He had jokes, and I was. <laughs> I was He's like three that. inches tall. That'd be kind of cute. You could like you could ride around on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah be nice. no. I like it. Could work. I really liked his hat too. <laughs> his hat that was just a part of his body. Uh-huh. That was something that kind of fucked me up while watching mm-hmm. this movie. Is that like your quote unquote parts of yourself as a robot mm-hmm. are like metallically integrated into your body mm-hmm. and that's just what you look like right yeah. but then there's this whole concept of getting new parts and they show why would you be you when you could be new and mm-hmm. they show robots getting new parts and looking like entirely different robots mm-hmm. right like a normal look like rodney's mom could end up looking like halle berry mm-hmm. if she just had the money it's true yeah so you it's like being a cartoon character where you wear the same outfit in every mm-hmm. episode you have to commit uh-huh. You have to commit to the look. You think you like? You think you know yourself? That's what, exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, like, it's like is, it would be as if all of your clothes were tattooed onto your body, and that's it. That's you're done. Your hairstyle never changes. Yeah, no, don't your love face. that. And some of these robots, I'm like, you picked to look like that. Even like, I get that the poor mm-hmm. ones have to kind yeah. of scrounge, <laughs> but the the upper level executive <laughs> ones, I'm like, some of you are not that cute, right? And you clearly have the money to look like whatever you want. Mm. I would be a vacuum. <laughs> I like that for you. <laughs> like a, what is that brand of vacuum? Devil? A devil vacuum? Or like... No idea what you're talking do about. Do you? I'm like, 
ever relate to a household appliance, you're like, ugh, me. Like, when the microwave is beeping too loud, and you're like, ugh, same. Like, I've definitely said stuff like that before, yeah. but do I relate? Like, you have to pick what a household... Do you, okay, you're implying that you relate to something, so what do you relate to? Well, just like, to? if you had to pick a household appliance to live the rest of your life as... A Roomba. A re- <laughs> That's a perfect example! I was, I was gonna say maybe, like, a smooth, um, like, a like a Nutribullet, <laughs> mm. so I could always have food in me. Yeah, that's That'd not be, bad. Because, like, if you had to be, like, a sentient... Household appliance, <laughs> as as it is implied that some of these robots are. Mm-hmm. I think being a blender would be kind of nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. or yeah, or like a, a microwave. Yeah, not bad. Heat up people's mm-hmm. food. Yeah, Roomba is a perfect choice. Yeah, but why did you rate this movie one through ten? Three. Uh, yeah, I was gonna give it a three. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as nostalgia, it really only holds a place of me remembering it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even remember it. Yeah. And um, the voice performances were basically what you would expect. Robin yeah. Williams was Robin Williams, and everyone else was just famous. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it was fine. Good message. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I'm glad I revisited it. Yeah, I d- I don't definitely haven't watched it in a long time, but there are certainly a lot of other cartoon movies or kids movies that I would have preferred. Like if we watched yeah. Iron Giant, like oh my god, true, fuck me true. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Let us know your thoughts about Big World, because I'm Big World as a concept has awoken something in me, <laughs> has awoken an anger in me, an unquenchable thirst for for the knowledge of who the fuck thought that that was okay. <laughs> um, so let us know yeah. if you think this movie is great, not great. Uh, if you have a lot of nostalgia for it, do you think you and McGregor should continue to pursue voice acting? <laughs> I think he's probably booked and busy. Yeah. Um, and thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate your continued support. You can find us on most social media platforms on Twitter and Instagram at The Swamp Pod, on TikTok at The Swamp Podcast, um, our website, theswamppodcast.com, where you can leave us messages, e- send us an email at The Swamp Pod. Mm-hmm. We love a good email. Yeah, at gmail.com. Um, also, we have merch can buy our merch, help us, I don't know. Buy a new mic. Buy a new mic, pay our intern, Jen. Yeah. Provide the funds so we can give you more merch. So if you have anything that you're, oh, I'm really dying for a beanie that says the swamp on it. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Um, And yeah, what what is the quote from the movie? It sounds so disheartened. <laughs> um, it's not the there's the bad quote, but then there's the good quote. Fill a need, see a need, fill a need. That's not the big one, but they I don't do like say that. they say that a lot. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> see a need, f- yeah, right. That is encouraging me to work. See a need, fill a need. No, I see a need, and I think. Okay. I see a need for murder in the street to end. <laughs> I see a need to fucking send one of those murdering street machines into the DreamWorks office and murder whoever thought it was okay to promote to children that it's okay to glorify a engineer. (laughs) Well, you can glorify engineers, but you just can't glorify CEOs. Or CFOs. (laughs) Just generally? <laughs> just, yeah, if, if somebody is the public, uh, the face of a company, that just uh-huh. means they're evil. Do you know how many companies? <laughs> what do you mean? Do you know how many companies there are? <laughs> yeah, a, a lot. <laughs> but you know how many Americans there are without health care, Emily? <laughs> so I, this is me publicly calling out Big Weld to redistribute <laughs> the wealth of Robot City. Put it back into the people where it belongs. And also, Rodney, consider a career change. I think you're more of a nurse. And um, that's that's all for, for now. 